Okay, so I'm just mixing up some epoxy now, like I did before. And I have put a tape dam all the way around the board. You can kind of see it here. That's just to mask off so I don't get like a lot of drips and just makes it really hard to uh, clean or sand later. Don't want to, just in case I get any runs or anything like that. So you can see the tape all the way around. The other thing I have here is I have a squeegee. This is an automotive squeegee for doing body work. It makes it really easy to spread it out. These are really cheap, so if you're doing this, get some of those. Um, you could use like a credit card if you're just doing a small job, um, or even just a brush. So now that this is mixed up nicely, try not to whip too much air in it. But I'm not doing a hot coat, so that's not as important. If you're doing a hot coat, try not to stir it as crazy. And what I mean by hot coat, for if you guys don't know what that means, it means it's the coat after the lamination. Now this is really important. Line up your glass. I have it already lined up. Dump all of this out pretty much because you don't want to leave it in a container. As you saw before, it can overheat. let it soak in by itself. I didn't mix up quite as much resin, so if I need to go back and mix a bit more, I'll do that. I have lots of uh, time to work with this because I have the slower epoxy, the slower hardener, I should say. But I have a feeling I probably won't need to do that. Also, when you're doing this, you can check out my other videos of how I laminate a surfboard, but you don't want to have so much that it pools. You want to let it saturate, and then you want to squeegee it off. Because what ends up happening is, if you make it too thick, um, that kind of just makes it hard to sand smooth, doesn't look right. You get odd, uh, you get odd layers of resin overlapping with the glass so it doesn't look very good and just uh, it's better if you just spread it out. You'll see a lot of the pros when they're doing it in their shop they're working awfully often with uh, not with epoxy usually it's polyester at least back in the day I think epoxy boards are more common now and they just kind of go along and they just kind of have a, the pour the resin on and they kind of gloop it off like that. I'm trying not to do that because epoxy is expensive and I'm just a backyard guy so I'm just doing the best I can with what I have here so uh, if I need to mix up a little resin it's not a big deal. So as you can see it's saturated through now so I'm going to come all the way down and do the rest. And you can see the colors come through nicely now. So now that I know I have enough, what I'm going to do now is squeegee this off. And I'm also going to kind of fix this up here, this edge here, just so it a bit better. My finger, just to level this out a bit. I don't want to do too much sanding, so I'm going to remove some of these strands here. Ideally, I'd have a 
foam brush or a, a brush to do this, but this will work. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, when I mentioned before, you don't want this resin pooling. As you can see, there's all kinds. You want to remove the bulk of it. Once I know I have all the fiberglass saturated. And when it's all saturated, you can't see white anymore. So. Alright, that's looking pretty good. Okay, I'm going to call that done. The way you can gauge that you've removed enough resin is when you run your squeegee over this, it should make kind of a sound like that. A zipper sound almost. When I look at this, I don't see any spots that are uneven. It all looks kind of matte. You can see the weave of the fiberglass a little bit. I don't know if I can see that on the camera too much. I got some weird reflections going on with some lights. I'll shut that light off here and I think you can get a better sense of it now. So that's pretty much it. Once it starts setting, you're not going to be able to do too much with it. It's pretty warm out, so that's why this is setting a little quicker, but I still am able to squeegee off a lot of it. I think I'll call that done. I'm not going to mess with it too much more. Once it starts setting, the more you mess with it, the worse it gets. So that's looking pretty good, I think. And I should mention, I guess I haven't explained, when you're laminating, laminate from the center outward. Lam sweet move the resin all the way around then work your way out like this and then work on the other side once everything's saturated to remove the resin that's looking pretty good so that's it gloved hand great to have some vinyl gloves I forgot to mention that get some disposable gloves nitrile gloves latex gloves works really great for uh, for laminating for working with this epoxy all right, I'm going to let this set up. We're good. All right, it's been about two hours, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to peel off this tape because it just makes it a lot easier than to let this completely harden because this is still a little gelled now. So the resin, the epoxy resin has gelled, and just makes it really easy to remove the tape all the way around. If I pull it now, if I wait, um, if any of the epoxy I got on the tape has a tendency to get really brittle, and what ends up happening when I pull the tape is uh, it doesn't release very easily. So if I do it now, it just makes it a lot easier later than having to scrape and sand to remove everything. Now I'll just let it completely cure and then I'll uh, start sanding. Okay, it's now the next day. This is set up nice and hard. I'm going to sand the edge here, blend in the fiberglass here where it meets the 
the original part of the board all the way around. So I'm going to do that, flatten out any little spots here. Uh, I'm going to vacuum it. Word of caution, you're going to be sanding fiberglass. It's going to make you itch. I highly recommend you wearing a respirator, which I always do. Keep this crap out of your lungs. Um, try not to touch the board with your bare hands now because when you hot coat, your the oils from your hands can cause the epoxy not to set. It'll cause fish eyes in the hot coat. Um, so yeah, I'm going to run a vacuum while I'm sanding this just to keep the dust down. I prefer to do that. It's an entirely optional. You can clean up afterwards. I just like to do that because it keeps the the dust off of my hands and off of my skin because it will make you itch. The other thing is a tip, once you're done sanding, if you do have any of the fiberglass dust on your body, when you go to wash your hands or your body, do not use hot water, use cold water. What happens if you wash with cold, uh, hot water is it opens up your pores and these little fiberglass particles will will embed or will be harder to get out of your skin. It'll make you itch like crazy. So use cold water because it keeps the pores closed. And uh, that's just a quick little tip that I've learned over time. Okay, I've sanded it all the way around, taking off all of the bumps. Got a little one right there I'll just touch up. Next, once I finish touching this up a bit, uh, I'm going to mix up some more epoxy. I'm going to put a piece of tape all the way around to keep the drips off of it again. Okay, I've mixed up another batch of epoxy with some additive F. If you don't know what additive F is, is you're using it. Um, if you're using epoxy, additive F just really helps the epoxy flow and it sets a little bit better. I'll say um, makes it a little easier to sand. So I have that all mixed up now. I'm going to pour it. I've vacuumed all of the dust off and I'm going to pour this out. And I'm just going to coat the bottom of this board. I just have a brush here. The additive F also helps prevent fish eyes as well. It's a surfacing agent. Um, in addition to all the other things I've mentioned. So now, hopefully I've mixed up enough. If I haven't mixed up enough, I might have to mix up just a little bit more. Because there is a minimum amount of epoxy that you need, or else you'll get fish eyes because of surface tension. I'm doing long, even strokes. Don't go back and forth like crazy. Work evenly. I actually think I have enough.
I'm going to feather in this edge here. I actually don't really need this piece of tape here. This was earlier when I was sanding. But I'm going to try to keep it thicker along here and thinner along this edge here. So when the, I sand, once this sets, it's easier to feather in. That looks pretty good. So I'm just going to run my brush lengthwise up and down just to smooth this out. So don't get any thick spots. Go horizontal across it. And that is it. Done. You might be tempted, if you see a bubble or something, to go back and mess with it. I'm telling you, don't do that. You'll just make it worse. If you have to, let it set and fix that afterwards. So, going to let this set and uh, try to keep the door closed if you're working in the garage because any airflow or anything will make dust settle on this and it will just impart dust in it and you know it won't look as good. Okay it's been about two hours. The epoxy has set up. It's gotten tacky and what I want to do now again it's like before is I want to pull the tape off while it's still setting because it just makes pulling the tape off a lot easier. You're not going to get bits of tape stuck because the epoxy has set and if any have leaked under the tape. Um, it will be a lot easier to, to remove. The epoxy is fully set up now, so what I'm going to do is sand it. I'm just going to sand it just so it blends in with the rest of the board. It's actually very smooth. There's no like real ripples in it. I probably would leave it if it would have, if it matched the rest of the board, but it doesn't. Typically, you probably will need to sand it because you do need to blend in the edge with the rest of the board. So you got to feather this in. So when I sand it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to work this edge. And I'm going to try to avoid sanding here in order to feather this in. You can do this by hand. You can do this with a disc sander. You can do this with a palm sander. I'm going to just use my little oscillating sander with, with some uh, probably, I'm going to do like maybe 180, maybe 200. If I had to remove a lot, I would go a lot coarser like I did earlier when I was roughing this. But you really don't need to go super, super coarse because you're just feathering this in. Probably better to go finer than coarser until um, you get a feel for it. All that'll happen is you'll just sand into the glass and you'll just have to re epoxy it, um, re hot coat it, or gloss coat it, uh, it, which is a bit of a pain. I'm gonna just get it because I already know there's enough glass on this. The really only spots that are exposed would be this edge here on my repair. So along the edge here, I'm just gonna feather this in. This is actually really really like there's all barely any edge where I peeled off the tape so this is really nice I'm quite happy with that so but if you're just doing a small repair a little patch or something say something this big you'd have your piece of glass out like this and then you would have your epoxy all the way out like this and then you'd feather it into the rest of the board so I'm doing a really big repair but if you're doing a small ding or small repair very similar 
I didn't get a chance to talk about filling in holes because I'm doing such a big repair. I cut out this this uh, spot here because of the bubbling. But in your case, if you have a ding, you could just um, sand it, clean it, remove all the loose fiberglass, fill it with some type of filler. You could you can buy some uh, fillers from the surf shops, or you could fill it with foam, glue a piece of foam in. There's a few different options, but what you can take away from this video is how to um, patch using glass and then epoxy and all the way, all the steps all the way through. So, 220 on my oscillating sander. You can use a palm sander, like I said. And I just want to blend this all in, rough this up to make it match. I'll probably take this up to about 400 and call it a day. I'm going to sand light. I don't want to sand into the weave of the fiberglass because then I'll end up having to re-glass it, re-epoxy it. Um, this is already looking pretty good, like I said, so I'm going to turn the vacuum on and do some sanding. So I just wanted to show you now how you can't even hear it when I run my fingernail over it. That repair has blended right in with the old board. I took my time and I just feathered it in. 220 is actually pretty rough, um, but I'm going to move now to 400 for the rest of the board because this is already pretty uh, smooth like I said. However. In your situation, if you have a lot of epoxy, say you didn't do a very good job um, glassing or hot coating, you might need to sand that down. I recommend go like maybe 100, maybe 120, and just work at it. If you go any coarser than that, you're going to get some pretty big gouge lines, um, especially if you're not experienced with it. Like you could go like an 80 or a 60 and just remove the bumps and then go with something finer. But it's just play it safe if this is like your first repair. Go with something a little bit finer rather than coarse. So now I'm going to switch the paper over and I'm going to do the rest of it and then blend it and then polish it and call this done. All right, I'm gonna sand the rails by hand because that doesn't need much sanding. Basically, I just wanna just smooth it out a little, that's it, just to get the shininess off of it because I can't, when I, even when I polish it, I'm never gonna get it as shiny as, or I could, but it takes a lot of work, as shiny as it is now with just the epoxy uh, unsanded, but I wanted to blend it to match the rest of the board, that's why. So, I'm just going to sand this. This is easier if you wet sand it, with sandpaper that starts getting into the 400 grit, 320, 400 grit. Um, but I'm just going to do it by hand here just to see how it looks. With 400 grit wet dry sandpaper. So this 400 grit wet dry sandpaper, you just wet it, it helps when you have the water from lubrication, it keeps the paper from clogging up. And when you're doing it, try to always go in one direction, trying to go back and forth like that. Try to go in one direction so it keeps all of the all of the lines, um, all of the sanding lines in one way, so it'll just look nicer.
All right, the last thing to do now, now that I've wet sanded it, it's dry, I'm going to compound it so that it blends it in with the rest of the board. It's all dull now. Once I hit it with some compound, it'll brighten it right up, and that will do it. I like using Meguiar's. Um, this is a polishing compound for cars and clear coats, but it works great for um, epoxy and polyester uh, surfboards as well. So, this is not a polish per se, but what it does is it's got little tiny particles in it that's an abrasive that really helps bring out, uh, remove oxidization and stuff, but in this case it's going to polish, it's going to compound, I guess, this surfboard. So, this is the stuff I like to use. You can, uh, Mothers makes one, there's a few different companies, just look around, pick one, but I had great luck with Meguiar's. You can see it's already starting to change. I'll do some more and then I'll show you the final result. So I got this repair done. I finished compounding. It looks pretty good, not as good as the original. And the reason why is I forgot. I took the original board when I made this. I took my time and I compounded this, or I should say wet sanded this all the way up to I think 1500. Definitely over a thousand, so it's incredibly smooth. Whereas here, I only took it up to around 600, and I didn't really do as good of a job sanding because I'm kind of anxious to get this back in the water. But aesthetically, it looks fine. Uh, more importantly, it's structurally sound. It's super strong. Um, this is all blended in well. I'm happy with that. You can see the difference, obviously, because this has only been sanded to 600, whereas this is way above that. Uh, the edge here on the rails is really good. No, uh, there's no ridge or anything. I got that all blended in really nice. And this repair here where it did bubble, well, because I glued it back down and then I put a layer of 4 ounce glass on it, it's just aesthetically you can see it because I couldn't find any tint to match the blue. Um, there's still a few little spots like this you can kind of see, only because, like I said, I didn't do as good of a job or take my time to sand it all the way flat. It's very flat. It Performance-wise, you won't even notice it. So, uh, I'm going to call this repair done. And if you have any comments, uh, post them. Uh, if you have a repair that's similar to this, hopefully this video helped you out, like I said. The techniques that I've used in this video can apply to repairing a surfboard ding or a broken surfboard. If you have a piece snapped off, the glassing and everything is very similar. I suggest you take, if you want to learn about surfboard building or how to do a more in-depth repair and just learn some of the basic skills for fiberglassing e using epoxy, uh, check out my video series on my channel here on how to build a surfboard. It's pretty in-depth. Um, I think people have found it really helpful, so go ahead and check that out as well. So uh, next, I am going to do another follow-up video after this one on installing vent plugs. I'm going to add an extra vent plug in this that is removable like this. I got these from AliExpress. They're Gore-Tex, I believe, so that they'll breathe, but there's, this is also removable. So stay tuned for that. I'm going to probably do that in the next few days as well. and. Uh, and call it